What's happening, people? Back with another reaction, back with some more Iron Maiden, back with a tune from an album I've yet to react to. Uh, this is a track from their Final Frontier album. Um, I reacted to uh, several tracks from like their first four or five albums with Bruce, um, actually like first seven albums with Bruce. Uh, I did jump ahead, did a reaction to something on Book, Book of Souls, as well as a couple on Senjutsu. Um, but I did make the point when I did a video for Childhood's End, I was like, hey, if you, there's any song that you'd like to hear between like Brave New World and Final Frontier, please do shout it out. No, I've since reacted to Ghost of the Navigator on uh, Brave New World. I really love that tune. Check out the reaction. I really enjoyed going through it. Uh, but then someone commented on that video for Childhood's End, uh, you should react to the Talisman on Final Frontier, and that's a great shout. It was the tune that really sort of struck me powerfully when I went through that album the first time. Um, I very much enjoy it. I am an academic historian. Um, I won't talk to you about my research, but I did specialize in the Muscogee peoples in the four or five decades after the American War of Independence. Nevertheless, any tune of Myron Maidens where they look at some episode or figure or like war or event in history, um, not only do I always get excited just because I'm a historian, but the way they give treatment and the way they give like, musical and lyrical tribute to these people who have fallen and died in these different circumstances or who lived in certain ways in different circumstances, it's just so impressive. Um, and one of the reasons that I just really like fell in love with the band when I started going through their catalog. Um, <clears throat> but this tune is essentially about like a maybe 17th or 18th century group of people, uh, including, you know, the narrator, who are leaving a country, and given the context, and they're going to the New World, it sounds like, so they're leaving some European country, and it makes the point to say that this is more of a push factor than a pull factor, as anthropologists say, meaning they are escaping the troubles of their homeland, and the narrator even says at the beginning, as he's looking back on out at the port on the ship, leaving, you know, am I ever going to see my homeland again? But unfortunately, it's become sort of satura saturated with corruption and, you know, evil men with um, malintent um, and sort of exploitation and so on. And so, you know, it's not clear if that's like religious or just political or, you know, ethnic or so on. Um, but they're leaving troubles uh, in their homeland and there is this sense of, you know, um, forlorn nostalgia that I love this place not what it's become, but I do love it. I don't know if I'm ever going to see it again, but nevertheless, they're excited about where they may be going, which is to this land of promise, a land where they might be able to make a new life for themselves and to find some sense of security and to not be oppressed or marginalized or exploited in the way that they were in their formerly um, wonderful homeland. <clears throat> so then the, the journey starts, um, and ultimately it becomes rough and you know this song is a song that pays homage to what uh, maritime travel was until very modern um, times which is to say long, um, dangerous, uncertain and ultimately far less precise um, in terms of exactly where you might want to be um, on your journey. Obviously they had techniques that have been developed for millennia but my point is um, it was a much more harrowing experience um, the possibility of running out of food or fresh water was very real, and this song absolutely hits on that. We'll get to that. Um, and then also, the the ships were far more vulnerable um, to extreme conditions. Um, not that ships today, you know, fare much better if they happen to find themselves in a hurricane or a squall. Uh, but at the end of the day, they begin this journey and they're traveling, and then a storm starts and. Soon they're holding on to you know the the whatever they can find on the deck because the storm is getting stronger and more powerful and some of the boats in this big group of people who are emigrating away from their um, troubled homeland they sink into the sea and the song makes the point that like oh you know the ghost of those who have like fallen and drowned like they're following us now they're still with us but they're you know these somber like drowned spirits like oh my god. And so the journey keeps going and it gets worse and you know like there's people just like barely surviving oh and by the way now they haven't had fresh water since before the storm started because they can't get away from the storm they're always just like right on the edge of the eye of the storm 
and the the narrator makes the point that ah to be a bird see they can fly above the storm they can get out they can you know they can get out of this and like when they make these sea journeys they're not subject to the same like dangers and vulnerabilities that we are but we're human we're on these boats we can't swim in the way that you know the whales can and so on we can't fly the way the birds can so here we are this is our plight you know we were out here on the sea trying to reach this place of golden promise um, but eventually, uh, not only do some of the ships uh, sink and some of the people die in that manner, but then other people die, start dying from starvation. Some people get scurvy because they haven't been able to get, you know, um, what is it, vitamin C. Um, so they basically, you know, people are falling for all sorts of different reasons, whether it's drowning or dying of starvation and so on. And when they finally get there, it does elate their moods. They do get excited, their spirits are raised. But the narrator himself, he's spent, like right as they get to the shore in this land of promise and people, despite the harrowing journey, are so excited he's not going to make it. His last ounce of, of strength has been used during this like grueling, arduous journey. Um, and so like right as they reach this new promised land, he dies. And, you know, I don't need to tell you that uh, people making those journeys across the Atlantic, both willingly and otherwise, to speak to a dark aspect of North American and ultimately transatlantic history. Um, but yes, many, many people died making that, uh, that passage across the Atlantic. So um, I think it's just an amazing song, like historically, because it speaks to what drove many Europeans to try to come to the New World. It speaks to the ways that maritime travel used to be sort of brutal and, you know, again, very, very dangerous. Uh, and it also speaks to the way in which, you know, there are many people in history. And again, it's, it's such a testament to Iron Maiden's ability to craft songs about the common people who, you know, are just trying to live their lives with some sort of peace and, like, measure of comfort and so on, but are often finding themselves the victims <clears throat> of these larger forces by, like, uh, malevolent rulers and, you know, um, cultural forces that push them into um, the margins and so on. So it's another song where Iron Maiden is singing about simple people who are just trying to escape oppression and have a simple life. So um, on multiple levels, I love the lyrics in this one. And by the way, the music kicks fucking ass too. So let's get to it. Uh, I did want to show the album really quick, but this is the t oh, and that's the thing. Like the narrator's like holding this talisman that like he was given when he left his homeland, and he keep like it's like something that he's like hanging on to as much as anyone is hanging on to like the ropes to prevent from going overboard and so on. And I think like right as he dies, if I'm remembering it correctly, he's sort of looking at it and still like appreciating the significance. So I'll have to remember. We'll have to see if I'm remembering that part right. Uh, but yeah, like I said, this is the talisman from their album, The Final Frontier, which is from, do we have a year here? 2010. Yeah, 2010. By the way, the track, or the album was produced by Kevin Shirley, co-produced by Steve Harris. Uh, and the album was mixed by Kevin Caveman Shirley. I'm not why, sure why he gets the caveman credit as uh, his mixing duties, uh, but regardless, this is the Talisman by Iron Maiden on their album The Final Frontier 2010. <laughs> Tell 
be seen on these shores again as we sail into ocean sighs and lose sight of life. Face of contentment around in the air. We're off now to see all our fortunes to the land of our say so push factor mainly but a pull factor too but now we're fucking rocking right You're out there now. I like that sort of dissonance of the guitar right at the measure of change over there. and the storm follows. Journey for 
success. Some of these ships will make it. still alive, no matter how much the hunger in their stomach, no matter how much the thirst in their throat, they see that land, it's like, oh my god, like, we're gonna make it. Narrator though, we'll see. Imagine months at sea, and you see that land. Think that wouldn't you? Like, oh my god, like only through that grace did we get here. Shout out to Bruce, man. Obviously a few in particular, including this one about maritime journeys, but... Oh. But yeah, I'm also thinking about that one, what is the name of it? Um, where the, you know, the ship, the huge, like, Titanic-style ship crashes on the beach and all those people die. Um, you know, most, not everyone on board, but most of the people, that one's sort of a, about a journey as well. So they just really narrate that kind of um, songwriting really, really well. Uh, I do love the guitar work also. There's a couple, as I mentioned, like really good uh, grooves and riffs. Um, the changing of tempos and like percussive uh, rhythms, I mentioned it before, like I'm just amazed at every song where they do, which is almost every song where they just have like these different sections like slow down, speed up, like quick like um, tempo or like uh, time signature changes. It's unbelievable. Um, and then, like I said, the lyrics are just uh, fantastic. I do want to check. It doesn't usually say on the back of the album here. Um, and then, you know, the I have all the the liner notes up on the wall, and I don't want to spend ten minutes taking it down. So give me one second. I'm just going to check um, to see if we can tell who wrote that. I wouldn't be surprised to find out it's Steve Harris, but let's see what we got. All right, so this album... Um, okay, so the Talisman, oh, it's by Harris and Gers, so uh, Yannick Gers and Steve Harris wrote this song, shout out to both of them, uh, amazing track, really love it, and I like that Gers gets a songwriting credit here, he also uh, was part of the writing team that did The Alchemist, uh, along with Dickinson and Harris, so yeah, shout out to them, um, this is fantastic, uh, let me know what you think about that tune. Let me know if there's another one from Final uh, Final Frontier you'd like to hear reacted to, or just any other Maiden tune that includes uh, uh, Dickinson as singer, because like I said, I have all the studio albums I did. Also, if you haven't uh, seen either of the reactions, I just got Live After Death, so I did uh, reactions to two of their um, classics, uh, Hallow Be Thy Name and Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner uh, from the 80s, like live performances. That was fantastic, but if there's any other song, on that one that you'd like to hear reacted to in particular, do let me know. Other than that, shout out to all the Iron Maiden fans out there. Really do appreciate it. Up the irons. Have a good day. Have a good night. I'll see you next time. Peace.